WAVA. The following program is sponsored by Rosenthal Wealth Management. Larry Rosenthal is a registered representative offering securities and advisory services through Satera Advisor Networks, LLC, a broker, dealer, and registered investment advisor, member FINRA SIPC. Satera is under separate ownership from Rosenthal Wealth Management Group. Rosenthal Wealth Management Group is located at 9265 Corporate Circle in Manassas, Virginia, and can be reached at 703-330-3100. Chris McKay is not affiliated with Satera Advisor Networks, LLC, nor Rosenthal Wealth Management Group. Bob Jones is an employee of Rosenthal Wealth Management Group and affiliated with Satira. It's time now for Making Money Sense, live with Larry Rosenthal. Larry is recognized as one of the nation's leading financial and retirement planners and is here to answer your questions right now. Author, speaker, and talk show host Larry Rosenthal is dedicated to teaching others financial stewardship from a biblical point of view. Call Larry now. Studio lines are open at 855-ROSE-123. That's 855-767-3123. Making Money Sense is on the air. Welcome, everybody, again to another edition of the Larry Rosenthal Show with Larry Rosenthal here in studio as he is every week. Good morning, Larry. Well, good morning, Chris, and how are you today? I'm loving it. I'm loving it. It's a good day to have you on the radio. It's always good to be here with you every Saturday. <laughs> Loving every minute of it. And of course, it's open mic Saturday, as we always like to say. Right? I like it. I like it. Absolutely. You know, open mic Saturday. Give us a ring. 855-ROSE-123 with any of your financial planning or retirement questions, estate planning, whatever's on your mind today. Give us a call. We want to be your resource for proper financial planning, wealth accumulation, income distribution, tax efficiencies, pretty much the whole nine yards. Give us a call, 855-ROSE-123. That's 855-767-3123. You can tell your friends about LarryRosenthal.tv. You can watch the, the show live streamed on YouTube every Saturday morning, as well as listening to us on WAVA in the D.C. Baltimore area, as well, and our our. Uh, Listeners nationwide, coast to coast on Sirius XM, Family Talk Channel 131. So welcome, Saturday morning, open mic Saturday. Uh, you know, this this past week, the NASDAQ did something, Chris, it hasn't done since last November, November of 2021. And that was it had a five-day win streak the entire week. The NASDAQ was up, tech stocks were up the entire week this past week, Monday through Friday. So that was kind of interesting news. You know, we had a lot of... of uh, uh, data out this past week, you know, and you've got <clears throat> half the data is there pointing towards the economy slowing down and moving towards recession. You've got the other half of the data saying not so fast. It doesn't look like we're going that way. You know, this past week, we had a very nice jobs report, even though in the face of U.S. and global economies starting to slow down, the U.S. labor market is, is you know, it's surprisingly tight. We added 372,000 jobs in uh, in June, that exceeded estimates by over a hundred thousand. Okay, so 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 the economy is still strong and robust, right? Uh, the the unemployment number didn't change; it stayed at three point six percent. However, the labor participation rate, which I don't like, dropped a couple of points down to sixty two point two from sixty four point four. Uh, whereas hourly earnings stayed right in line with uh, it was up 0.3 month over month. So. When you take a look at that information there, you have to say, what recession? We yeah. haven't had a recession yeah. in the past when when job market was so tight, when wages were rising, corporate earnings are still coming in strong. But yet you, you take a look at commodities now. Commodities have pretty much rolled over. Have you noticed the price of gas in the last week or 10 days down. has yeah. come down? Yeah, it's nice. 20, 30 cents, right? Yeah. Yeah, so so we've seen we've seen gold drop, we've seen oil drop, we've seen the price of commodities come down uh, the the last handful of weeks, which is showing a slowing in the economy for demand of that of those materials there. So all of this right now, where does this push us? Where does this put us to? Well, you know, welcome to the second week in July this coming week, right? That means we're going to start earnings season. We're going to start taking a look at the second quarter of 2022 versus the second quarter of 2021 corporate earnings. They're projected, again, to come in positively and strong. Not as strong as we, we as people had thought, you know, beginning of this year, but still strong and positive growth. So we'll have to keep our eye closely on that. 
Um, you know, again, the number one reason people buy buy stocks is based off the future anticipation of corporate earnings, right? If companies say, hey, things are doing well, you want to invest in them. If company says, eh, things aren't so well, you probably want to stay away from them, right? Mm -hmm. So so all of this information right now <clears throat> sort of keeps, you know, the Fed at play. Obviously, the Fed is at play. This coming week, June, uh, July 13th, middle of the week here, we're going to get the June inflation numbers. And all eyes are going to be on that all week long. That's what this week is going to be all about, is what the June inflation numbers are going to be reading, what that's going to tell us. Right now, there's about a 98% probability that the, at later this month, the Fed meeting July 26, 27, somewhere around there, they're most likely going to raise 75 basis points, which I'm fine with. OK, well, that's going to bump up their interest rates a little bit more even, too. Right. That right. will bump up interest rates in banks. Definitely. Uh, no doubt about that. Loans. And we'll have to see what the bond market mm -hmm. does. You know, right now, the bond market is slightly inverted to flat. And and, um, you know, when the Fed raises their rate, they affect the short end of the curve, which will flatten the curve even more. So we'll have to wait and see how that really plays out, you know. But uh, the 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 you know the 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 risk of recession is still we, we have yeah. you know half the people out there calling for it and half the people saying no not so fast okay not so fast so you know last week the the average thirty year thirty year fixed mortgage fell from a little over six percent to about five point six percent nationwide. It feels like supply chains are kind of getting back to normal too. Supply bit. chains are picking up a little bit. You know, we're starting to see demand move from goods into services, uh, which, which means excess inventory, which means prices will start to drop, right? But when you get a lot of service demand out there, you know, that is an inflationary pressure as well. So mm -hmm. again, a lot of data points to recession easing, a lot of data points to in, in session continuing. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, inflation continuing. And so, again, that puts the Fed at the bullseye of all of this. The Fed's going to raise rates later this month, most likely 75 basis points. We'll see what happens uh, with the June reading next week on inflation. But all in all, you know, by the end of the year, the estimates are still that inflation comes down from the mid eights to where it is now, down into the mid fives. And at some point, we're going to see a Fed pivot. In other words, we're going to see the Fed actually at some point, probably later this year, come out and say, OK, you know what? We're going to ease off the tightening cycle. We're still going to tighten. Maybe we'll still keep things tight, but we may move to more of a, a less tightening stance. Once that happens, Wall Street will see a light at the end of the tunnel, mm -hmm. and then it's all going to focus back right back on core fundamentals in the economy. What's the consumer doing? What's business doing? What are corporate earnings doing? And things like that. You know, even if the rates end up being, even if the Fed rate ends up being three and a half percent, right? And then, you know, but over the course of the next year or so, that's still an accommodative policy, historically mm -hmm. speaking, right? Yeah. It's not- We got over, spoiled. It's not <laughs> over tight. We did get spoiled. That That's for sure. A lot of free capital out there. So stay tuned again, you know, as we've been saying all year long, this is going to be the summer of patience. Okay. Mm -hmm. Summer of patience. Volatility has waned a little bit this past week, you know, and, and, and one, one thing too, that, that came out this week, which uh, surprised me, I didn't see this coming, but uh, the IRS sort of changed the amount of uh, mileage you get to deduct. I saw you know, that. It used to be, yeah, it used to be 58 and a half cents per mile that they announced uh, last December. They just bumped it up to 62 and a half uh, cents starting in July this year. So that's kind of news. Uh, that's kind of new and, and, and accommodative. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, to, to everyone to help everybody out on their tax returns. So, so good news for that, for those of you that, that claim mileage deductions in your business. So, you know, again, uh, stay tuned uh, to see what happens this, this coming week with the Fed. It's all, I mean, with the inflation number, that's what this week is going to be all about, uh, you know, as far as market activity goes and, and things like that. So, hey, you can give us a ring here this morning. I'm Larry Rosenthal, host of Making Money Sense. Give us a call at 855-ROSE-123. That's 855-767-3123. Give us a call with any of your financial planning, investment questions. we got a lot of things to talk about today. Pensionable income the secure act uh you know what 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 attributes are in retirement people's lifestyles all kinds of subject matter today but i'd like you to drive the show with your questions give us a call with anything on your mind 855 rose 123 that's 
767-3123. You're listening to Making Money Sense. I'm Larry Rosenthal, and we'll be back in a moment. You are listening to Making Money Sense live with Larry Rosenthal. Phone lines are open for your retirement and financial planning questions at 855-ROSE-123. That's 855-767-3123. More Making Money Sense in a moment. There are still too many countries that give little or no assistance to disabled children. In third world nations, these children could be left alone while parents try to eke out a living. About 10 years ago, residents of Prince William and Fauquier counties in Virginia formed Children with Disabilities Fund International. It focuses on the needs of disabled children. CDFI's current work in Jamaica and Kenya supports about 300 disabled children and their families. For some of these children, they're getting the care they need for the first time in their lives. CDFI recently began an individual child sponsorship program in an effort to better meet the needs of these disabled children. To choose your child to sponsor, go to thecdfi.org. That's thecdfi.org. Your gift will help transform not only a disabled child's life, but the lives of their parents and of the surrounding community. Go to thecdfi.org. Make a difference. Go to thecdfi.org. You've seen and heard him on Fox Business, CNBC, and The Wall Street Journal. Larry Rosenthal is here right now to take your calls at 855-767-3123. That's 855-ROSE-123. This is The Larry Rosenthal Show. Well, welcome back to The Larry Rosenthal Show. 855-767-3123 is the number to call. That's 855-ROSE-123 to talk to Larry Rosenthal, who's... Here in studio with us today, Larry. I'm back, Chris. Yes, you absolutely. Are. And check us out, LarryRosenthal.tv on YouTube Live. Also, go check out our website. We're getting ready to launch a brand new website, as well as announce some of our webinars that will be coming up later uh, in the next few weeks on what's going on in the markets, the economy. We want to wait to get past the uh, June inflation number and what the Fed does here at the end of the month. And then we'll be rolling some stuff out here for us. Again, want to be your resource for knowledge when it comes to investment planning, wealth accumulation, financial planning, investment strategies, retirement, whatever's on your mind. You know, so I want to talk today about pensionable income. I had a client of mine send me an article to this, this past week, which I just looked at. And I just said, you know, that's pretty smart planning. And um, uh, talking about pensionable income, and I want to relate that to all of us. Uh, from the standpoint of, you know, we've got to start, we've, we have to take a look at, we, we all know the importance of saving money for, for a rainy day, right? Quote, unquote, save money for a rainy day. So you have something down the road and around the corner for yourself when you get into retirement, save money for college planning, whatever it may be, right, that, that you're trying to, to shoot for. <clears throat> But it's also important at the same time to make sure that as you're saving money, you're getting two components of it. You're getting growth toward the future and you're getting an income capability once you get down the road to that, that, that future. And, um, uh, you know, Bobby Benilla, uh, Benilla retired from, from baseball in 2001. I know, Bob, you'll like this, right? You, you know where I'm going with all this, right? Back to baseball talk. <laughs> yep. He took some deferred payments from his contract. Okay. He's 58 years old today. And starting in 2004, the Mets are paying him $500,000 a year for 25 years. The Orioles are paying him $500,000 a year for 25 years. And in 2011, the Mets are going to pay him 1.1 million up until 2035, right? So you talk about deferred payments, and I'm reading this and I'm and I'm laughing, going, "Wow, you know that was really brilliant." You know, there's there was a scenario there where somebody said, "You know what? Let's let's take a look at the future uh, to protect income for yourself down the road." Now, the problem with that is what happens if Major League Baseball goes out of business, right? 
You know, I don't know. Or that, that could be an issue unless all of this money is set aside in what's called a rabbi trust, okay, <laughs> for deferred comp programs, which could very well be. I don't know the ins and outs of it all, what, what the deal was. My point is this, though, is that when as we move through life, it's very important. And I'm really talking to a lot of people today in your 20s, 30s, and 40s. It's very important, and it's a tough balance to incorporate lifestyle today with being able to hold back money, push money forward into the future, allowing it to grow in different investment vehicles for yourself so that you can get these streams of income. Now, you might not be able to get, you know, $2.1 million in impensionable income each year for, for forever or whatever the case may be. But my point is the same, is that we've got to be able to have a balance. And that balance all starts off with cash flow desires today, standard of living today, and commitment commitment to saving money for the future. You know, a couple of basic rules we've got to really understand. Who owns the money, right? It's the Lord's. What is our responsibility? Stewardship. We need to look to tithe and have additional gifts and offering, you know, figure out where we want to give, things like that. Save, pay taxes, and then live off the rest. And I know there's a, that, that could take a big chunk out of the formula, but we've got to really make sure that we're really starting to save dollars. And I know that there's a, a lot of young investors out there who are spooked about the stock market going up and down in 2020, 2022, all this stuff back and forth. And you think that it's, it's pretty neat to get on the apps and buy and sell and buy and sell. And I see this because I know a lot of young investors um, and and you've got to really take a look at buying quality. Here's the deal. You want to buy quality. You want to hold that quality until that quality goes away or your investment objectives change. So be thinking about this, people in your 20s and your 30s and your 40s, okay? Parents, grandparents, sit down at the kitchen table and talk to the younger generation about the savings, about the importance of it. And by the way, it is not about your rate of return this year or next year. It's about the acquisition of shares. Make sure that you accumulate a lot of shares. And that's what puts the, when you put money in every single month into these quality type of long-term investments, then you're, you're accumulating shares. And as, as time goes on, as businesses grow and expand, as markets grow and expand, as our wonderful economy in America continues to expand and grow with industries, OK, those share values will eventually come back and, and grow in, in, you know, the market has always come back. So, so my point is, make sure that you're starting to save and you can go to my website, LarryRosenthal.com, click on a video right there. And there is a, a 90 second video that basically gives you a demonstration of how a properly structured financial plan works. So think about that. Go check it out. Go hit the website, LarryRosenthal.com. While you're there, if you want, you can go ahead and, and order up our financial planning toolkit. We'll be happy to send it out to you so that you can get started in building your financial planning so that you can produce income for yourself, just like Bobby Manilia has uh, <laughs> yeah. in, in, in retirement years. You know, what a, what a great story that is. Yeah, it is. Abs absolutely. There's a maturity well, thing here, isn't there? It's a long game. And as you're sort of becoming an initial investor, you really got to learn that, that lesson and that you can't buy and sell, buy and sell. And when it gets, it's always, you know, buy high, sell low. No, it's the other way around. Well, if you take a look, Chris, at the average investor over the last 20 years from 2002 through 2021, December of 2021, because that's the latest data we have. Okay. That's a, that's a 20 year period of time. Mm. The S and P's done a little under 10% during that period of time. And the average investor has done right around 3%. Wow. And why is that? Nerves. Why is that? And it's because of getting in and out yep. and in and out and trying to time and do all this kind of stuff. Not only does that create transaction costs in some cases, but it also creates in some cases tax issues as well mm -hmm. along the way, you know, and not to mention a little bit of worry and a whole lot of research that you have to do all the time. So, so there is value in understanding it's time in the market. Right. It's not timing. And that's what I'm trying to say to young investors today. It's time in the market. Find quality, buy that quality until the quality goes away. You hold it and keep accumulating it unless your objectives change. That's the deal right there. So, hey, we also, I want to switch subject here. We also have been getting a lot of questions and a lot of things have been popping up lately about the SECURE Act, which took place mm -hmm. in 2019. Okay. 
And the SECURE Act changed forever the way beneficiaries are going to be treating IRA inheritance money, inheritance money. It used to be before the SECURE Act that you were able to take as a non-spousal beneficiary, you, you were able to enjoy what was called the Lifetime Tax Advantage Stretch IRA. Let me say that again. The Lifetime Tax Advantage Stretch IRA. In other words, if, if someone passed they left you IRA money and you were able to just to enjoy getting that income. You, you, you were able to hold on to that account for as long as 82.4 years. Okay. Uh, and each year you just have to take a little tiny bit out uh, to, to pay a little bit of tax on it, but you were able to allow that tax deferral to continue for a long, long time down the road in 2019, the secure act came along and changed that. Okay. And we're getting more and more questions on this. And unfortunately, it's because people have passed away. And what the new rule on the SECURE Act is this, is when you, re as a non-spousal beneficiary, who's greater than 10 years younger than the account owner, okay, receives IRA money that's never been taxed before, <clears throat> the new rule is this you have to pull all of the money out within a 10 year period of time. So you don't have to take anything out year one or two, or you can, if you wanted to, it's just by the end of 10 years, you have to completely liquidate the account and pay tax on it all. Okay. So, so, um, you know, uh, financial advisors all over the country are starting to deal with this and it, it becomes a very interesting math calculation. You have to take a look today, and let me set the stage. Uh, let's suppose somebody passes and there's a million dollars in the IRA, and the money goes to, just to make it simple, a, a, a sing. well, let's, let's, let's make it not so simple. Let's make it a, a real-life scenario. This recently happened where, where there's two beneficiaries, two non-spousal beneficiaries, kids. So the kids are greater than 10 years younger than the parent, Right. And so one child gets 500,000, the other child gets 500,000. One child is in a very low tax bracket. One child is in a pretty high tax bracket, right? So the rules of the engagement here are this, is both kids can pull all the money out now if they wanted to and pay tax, or they can both let it sit there and incumate and keep growing tax deferred. But at the end of 10 years, they have to pull all of the money out. So, so if, if somebody takes a $500,000 IRA and lets it sit there for 10 years, if it grows at 7.2% in 10 years, it'll be worth a million dollars. And then you have to pull all of it out. And now you're going to drop a million dollars of taxable income into your lap. What's going to be the tax rate at that particular point in time? It's going to be the highest. If we base it off of today and you take a look at just federal tax rates, and then add in some state, you know, depending on where you live, you're looking at somewhere in the low 40 percentile Cha -ching. versus saying, well, maybe I need to take some of that money out each and every year. Right. So it's all sense. going to depend on your your situation today, as well as trying to forecast it down the road. But understand this, though, this clock is ticking for everyone now who receives this. This is something you have to be on. We already have time, time things in our, in, with our clients on, on who, has, who has already received this. We have, unfortunately, uh, a good number of people who is uh, already on this 10-year clock, okay? And, and understand these rules. Now, um, uh, again, there's no forcing you to take the money out each and every year. You don't have to do that at all. You can if you wanted to, but just by the end of 10 years, you've got to completely pull it out. So that's the SECURE Act. I've, I've done a handful of webinars and all of that. And, and, and later this year, after we get past uh, summertime, I'll be rolling some more of that stuff out as well. Uh, it's important to understand, too, that you need to take the required minimum distribution if the account owner was, was over 72 before you change any of the dollars. Reason. Yep, the, the required minimum distribution as well. So, so there's a handful of things that have changed on this. And I wanted to revisit this because there's a lot of questions flying all around the place in the financial circles about this rule and how it works, you know, and, and, and things like that. What so, are the numbers on that required minimum distribution? How does that work? 
So when you're age 72, Chris, they're, they're, you know, assuming there's, there's no death involved, but you're 72 years old or you're older, the IRS says, hey, you know what, you've enjoyed a tax deduction to put this money in. You've enjoyed tax deferred growth every year, right? And, and now we want a little bit of our money back. Or, or we want to tax a little bit of your money, I should say, right? Mm -hmm. So they, there's a formula that says you've got to take out a certain percentage, a certain amount each and every year when you're 72 and 73 and 74, 75, and so forth and so on, right? It goes all the way up to, I think, the age 121 or something. How is that formula based? Is it based so on? So the formula is based off of this. It's based off of your December 31st prior year's account balance, oh, okay? So let's suppose that December 31st, 2021, you had a million dollars in your IRA and in and sometime in 2022, you turn 72 years old. So now you've got all year long, you've got all the entire year 2022 to take your required minimum distribution. And the formula for the first year is 27.4. You take the number 20, you take the number $1 million, which in this example was your, re, your account balance at the end of December 31st, 2021, right? And divide it by 27.4. That's the amount of money that has to come out. Mm, okay. So gotcha. I'll just do it here real quick for you. Divided by 27.4. It's about $36,500 or just about. Okay. So that's about what you would have to take out that money is taxable to you. You can do anything you want with it, okay? Now, one of the things too is, is um, you can, you're also eligible at 70 and a half actually, but in this case, at 72, you're also eligible for a qualified charitable donation, a QCD. So think about this. If you, if you tithe and want to make some donations to a church or charity or missions or whatever the case may be, you know, and you're used to doing it out of your bank account or out of your income or, or, or something like that, you can simply lift the money right from your IRA, your required minimum distribution and send it right over to the charity. That satisfies the required minimum distribution for you. And it's very clean on your tax return. So think about this. You, you got a tax deduction for, um, uh, you, you got a tax deduction for uh, putting the money into your retirement account years ago has been growing tax deferred. And now you're going to give it to a charity and there's no taxes on it and it satisfies your tax obligation for your required minimum distribution. So, yeah, so there's a lot of opportunity there in, in, in tax planning and in income planning when it all comes to all of this. So Ashley, we've got to take a quick break here. Let's uh, open up the phone lines. Give us a call at 855-ROSE-123. That's 855-767-3123. You're listening to Making Money Sense. I'll be back in a moment. You are listening to Making Money Sense live with Larry Rosenthal. Phone lines are open for your retirement and financial planning questions at 855-ROSE-123. That's 855-767-3123. More Making Money Sense in a moment. And here's another Money Minute with Larry Rosenthal. So many different ways to invest money. Lump sum deposits, buy and hold, market timing. How about dollar cost averaging? Put the same amount of money into the same investment at every interval, whether it's monthly, quarterly, annually, whatever it may be. This gives you the greatest opportunity to get the average price over the long term of the investment because one of the secrets to creating wealth is the acquisition of shares. You want to keep buying more and more shares over time. On the flip side, when you're in your retirement years and you want to distribute dollars to yourself for income, do the same thing in reverse. Dollar cost average out during your retirement years. There are still too many countries that give little or no assistance to disabled children. In third world nations, these children could be left alone while parents try to eke out a living. About 10 years ago, residents of Prince William and Fauquier counties in Virginia formed Children with Disabilities Fund International. It focuses on the needs of disabled children. CDFI's current work in Jamaica and Kenya supports about 300 disabled children and their families. For some of these children, they're getting the care they need for the first time in their lives. CDFI recently began an individual child sponsorship program in an effort to better meet the needs of these disabled children. 
To choose your child to sponsor, go to thecdfi.org. That's thecdfi.org. Your gift will help transform not only a disabled child's life, but the lives of their parents and of the surrounding community. Go to thecdfi.org. Make a difference. Go to thecdfi.org. Call right now with your questions, 855-767-3123. That's 855-ROSE-123. Coast to coast from the nation's capital, this is the Larry Rosenthal Show. Welcome back to the Larry Rosenthal Show with Larry Rosenthal, our financial and retirement actor, right here at studio there. Yep. If you're watching on LarryRosenthal.tv. Give us a call at 855-767-3123, 855-ROSE-123. Larry. Sure, Chris. Let's welcome Nelson on the line from Missouri. Good morning, Nelson. How are you today? Good morning. I'm doing well. Thank you. Uh, I totally agree with your comment about buying quality, but I I need some advice. Uh, I have about seven or eight individual stocks, and then I have ETS and mutual funds. I find it a lot, lot easier because of all of the news, uh, say, on Apple and Microsoft and Home Depot and Procter & Gamble, it's a lot easier to know if I have quality with my stocks as opposed to a mutual fund, which I never hear anybody, well, not never, but you don't hear as much information on the radio or television about mutual funds, uh, a little bit on ETS. So I, I know if... Well, I think I know if I have quality with my stocks, but too much with my mutual funds and uh, much with my ETFs. Does that make Nelson, sense? when you when you want to grade a, a stock or an ETF or an ETN or a mutual fund, an open end mutual fund, a closed end mutual fund, a unit investment trust. When you want to grade all of these, <clears throat> there are software services you can subscribe to that will help grade them and screen them for you. For example, if you said, hey, here's my XYZ mutual fund, how does it stack up? Very quickly, I can throw the ticker symbol into a couple of different software packages and get third-party an <clears throat> excuse me, analysis done on that fund, how it compares to all of its peers, Okay how it compares to, to uh, the benchmark that it's, it's, it's pressed against, how it compares to against anything. Basically, I can look at everything from performance, tax efficiencies, yield, um, uh, ranking within category, risk, the whole nine yards. I can take a look at, at book value, cash flow value, the whole nine yards inside of a mutual fund as well. So it's just a matter of knowing where to look. You know, you can, you can take two mutual funds, one ranks out in the bottom 10%, and the other one ranks out across the board in the top 10%. That's one of the ways that you can take a look at it. There's all different software programs out there. It's not hard to do as far as that goes. Same with ETFs, same with UIT, same with all of them. So, so you have the ability to go about doing that. And, and, and a couple of things you want to look at is rank within category. I've got a whole screening process that we go through when we're evaluating a mutual fund or an ETF. Um, I mean, there's, there's, I don't know, there's probably 70 or 80 data points that we would really look at in addition to even calling the fund company and getting the fund manager on the line or, or the representative and, and asking them the difficult questions as well. So there's a lot of research that goes into it, but it's not hard to find out if they're quality versus its peer group. Does that make sense? Uh, two, okay, two questions. Do you, do you, does the individual like me have to pay for that uh, software program? So no, you can go probably to uh, Morningstar.com and get some basic information there. Um, you know, a lot of it's out there, you know, Yahoo Finance, you can get some basic information out there. I subscribe to a, a few different services because I want to get all the information that I can get. But you can get you can get some basic stuff out there. Now you've just got now you've got to understand what you're reading and understand how to compare it against other funds and other ETFs and things like that. And especially when you're comparing a stock versus an ETF versus a mutual fund, 
all three of them have pros and cons to them. You know, they all have different attributes to them. Why you would purchase a mutual fund versus a stock versus an ETF. They all have pros and cons to them. You know, so we personally like individual stocks, mutual funds, and ETFs. And there's time for active management yeah. mutual funds versus passive. There's time for, for, for equal weighted versus mark cap weighted ETFs. There's time for individual stocks. There's time for all that stuff, depending on what's happening in the economy, the sector that you're in, the tax efficiencies that you need, lots of different things like that. So Nelson, if you like, I'll go ahead and I'll put you on hold and, and I'll have Bob get your information and we'll have someone reach out to you next week and, and, uh, you know, give you a list of, of the way that we go about screening the funds and the ETFs. And that, that might give you a start as far as that goes. So I appreciate the phone call. You listen to making money sense. Give us a ring at eight, five, five rows, one, two, three, that's eight, five, five, seven, six, seven, three, one, two, three. With any of your financial planning or investment questions, give us a call today. Uh, again, next week, we've got all eyes on the inflation number coming out early next mid next week. Uh, we're going to get the June print, as they call it. So, you know, turning our turning our attention to to where it should be anyway, you know, in Proverbs uh, chapter 10, mm -hmm. verse four says lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth in Colossians 323. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. You know, wow. let's get powerful, some education. There. Yep, definitely. Let's get some education, understand what our role is and understand what the Lord wants us to try to do with the assets he's blessed us with, not only today, but but into the future as well. And don't get caught up so much in the world acumens uh, and, and, you know, be thinking spiritually, be thinking eternally, I should say, with with the dollars that you have. So you're watching uh, you're watching the uh, you're watching the Fed's possibility of raising the basis points up here. What does the average investor really take from that? Does that mean we need to buy because things are on sale or it might be a good idea to consider that right now before that pops into play or maybe we wait? What is the what is the best idea? So, look, the market is going to continue to have volatility, yeah, of course, turbulence until the Fed pivots. When the Fed pivots, what I mean by right now is the Fed is in a tightening cycle, okay? And soon the Fed is going to move to more of a neutral stance where it's going to say, we're happy with where rates are. We're happy with our mandate, which is maximum employment and price stability, okay? Then the markets, the economy knows it's not going to be tightened down anymore at that uh, particular point. And it goes back to organic growth. And then very quickly, the Fed goes in the rearview mirror mm -hmm. and all eyes are on corporate earnings, strength of consumer and things like that. OK, then at some point down the road, the Fed says, well, the economy's a little sluggish. We're going to throw a little grease in the gears of the economy, maybe lower rates by a quarter basis points. Right. Or maybe the Fed says, hey, you know what? The economy is heating up again. We're going to bump a little bit. Fed hard wants to, to keep to it know, sort of yeah. neutral. The Fed wants to try and walk that balance, that, that tightrope of maximum employment and price stability. And both of those mandates fight against each other, Chris. Mm -hmm. When you have maximum employment, wages rise. And when wages rise above the, what, what people need, right, they start to spend more money. And when you have too many dollars chasing too few goods, mm -hmm that creates inflation, right? And so, you know, that, that's the balance mix right there. So later this summer, later this year, we'll start to see it come down. We'll start to see the Fed ease the foot off the brakes a little bit, okay? Um, and kind of go from there. And so that's, that's what you're talking about. Well, so you right want, now, the, answer, the specific answer to your question is, is this a buying opportunity? Well, absolutely it mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. You know, if you liked if you liked X Y Z stock last December when it was at its all time high, why would you not like it today? The 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 management hasn't changed and messed up the the value of the company stock. There hasn't been a new company that's coming in and taking over market share so much that it's causing that stock to go down. You know, take a look at at retail. Take a look at automo automotive. Take a look at at technology. Take a look at consumer staples. All these are down, right? All these are down right now. So, so has there been a new company that's coming in and taking market share from all these industries? No. 
have all these industries CEOs messed up their, their company so bad that the stock price is dropping? No, these companies are still making money. They're still moving further into industry. The tide has moved out, and we know later the tide comes back in and lifts all the boats. But now the question becomes, what does the economy look like after the tide comes back in? Mm -hmm. What's the new economy look like, right? Can we get inflation back to the targeted uh, desire of 2%? Well, we might not be able to with, if energy prices remain stubborn and if supply chains don't come fully back online. Right. Right. So we may be dealing with a slower growth economy, not one that accelerated like we had over the last handful of years, but a slower growth economy with a little bit higher inflation rates. Maybe 2023, 2024, 2025, we see inflation hanging around three to four and a half percent. And we see corporate earnings not accelerating as much, but still positive and growing. Mm -hmm. So now you're in a slower growth with slightly elevated inflation. What does that mean for your positions going forward? What does that mean for your, your, your companies that are looking down the road and around the corner for corporate earnings? What does it look like for you know, uh, uh, companies that say, yeah, we don't have any earnings today, but look at our new technology, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe those stocks might not do so well in that type of an environment. You want to have quality balance sheets. You want to have companies that have real earnings, real customers, real, real, real corporate earnings and things like that going forward. So we'll have to wait and see how that all plays out. There's a, there's a handful of, uh, I guess, different off-ramps that, that sure. this economy is going to take. And right now, it's very, very uh, uh, interesting it, it's, it's, it, to see where things are. And I see people guessing all the time and guessing wrong <laughs> yeah. all the time yeah. on this. Yeah. You, know, you, you want to make sure you've got quality and just get through this summer of patience, the summer of volatility is what really needs to happen here. To answer your, to answer your ultimate question, Chris, mm -hmm. that, that's what it is. This is one of those times when you've got to sit back and go, okay, which way is it going to go? And then make sure you're on the right side. You're, you're in the correct lane of traffic. Right. Once we get through, uh, you know, the, the, the inflation breaking down and it will. Okay. Yeah. You're always, um, you always say that spending drives the economy. <clears throat> that's one of the big things that you talk about is that spending. And it seems like the consumer does have some money to spend, but sometimes the goods are not there to be able to buy. Right. I mean, well, that's part of the problem coming out of COVID uh, mm -hmm. 19 was that we had, we burned off inventory for a year and a half basically and stimulated. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. so there, there you go. That, that was part of the inflation problem too. Definitely. So, yeah. but you know, Hey, all eyes this week. And yes, to answer your question, it is a buying opportunity with, with, without a doubt. There, there's no, no doubt in my mind. You know, history shows that the markets have always come back to new market highs. So why not accumulate more shares, right? Good timing. So, hey, let's pivot a little bit here and talk about financial planning a little because that's what we really do is financial planning, wealth management, you know. Um, some of the attributes, you know, when people get, 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 get into retirement years, or, or close to retirement years, when we start talking to people in their financial plans and stuff like that, part of, part of some of the things that we want to uh, extract out in conversations is, you know, let's take a look at, at people that have come before you into retirement years. And let's talk about people that have kind of retired well and, kind, and people that haven't retired well. <clears throat> and a lot of people instantly go right to the wallet. Well, people that haven't retired well probably didn't save much. No, I'm talking about things other than money. Other than money. Think about this for a second. You've spent umpteen years working. You get up in the morning, you go to work, you know all the people at work, you know where you sit at work, you know, you, 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 and all that stuff. You know what you do. But then all of a sudden, one day, that stops. And it stops and then, and then, then what are you going to do? And, and my, my point is this, is let's take a look at some of the people who enjoy retirement. Um, and, and again, non-financial conversation right here, but, but attributes of those who don't as well. You know, we, we find that some people uh, are not enjoying retirement because they're bored. They have nothing to do. They, they wake up in the morning and there's nothing on their, on their calendar and uh, they're, they're bored uh, versus somebody who says, you know what, I've got kind of a bucket list. I've got an active social life, okay? 
Um, I might be mentoring or coaching younger kids, you know, maybe, maybe teenagers or, 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 or whatever it may be. Uh, they take up new hobbies or they have a hobby that they're exploiting now versus someone who, who isn't retiring well is sitting around going, well, what am I going to do today? I have no plan. <laughs> That's and why I'm see, never retiring there. I'm, there you go. I don't yep. want to sit around. Right. And, and, and we see this a lot. We, we, we really do. You know, I have a good friend of mine who's retired and he tells me that he's more busy now than he was when he was working, you know? Yep. And, 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 and my point is this, is that when we are talking to clients about retirement planning, these types of conversations get involved into it. You know, do you, what is it that you really want to try to do other than sit on the couch all day? Mm -hmm. Okay. How are you going to stay physically active? How are you going to stay mentally active? How are you going to challenge yourself? And we find that more people that are happy in retirement are busy. They're doing things, okay? Um, whether it's travel or they have a purpose-driven uh, social activity or they're volunteering or they're doing other things like that. They have routines. They're, they're eating and working out well versus people that, that have no plan for that. Because everybody who's, who's aiming towards retirement knows fundamentally that you've got to save money, right? So it's really not about a money scenario. It's more about a, am I prepared mentally, socially, okay, for this new endeavor for the next 30 years of your life with no game plan? And so those are some of the things that we can put into a financial plan. I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that there's 130 checkpoints in a financial plan. Most people do about 62, 63 of them. Okay. But this is some of the convert. These are some of the conversations that we really need to have. What do you want to get out of the next 20 or 30 years of your retirement life? What do you want it to be like? What does your finish line look like? What is important to you about that stage of life? What do you want to try to do as far as leaving a value oriented legacy to the people that you know? You know, these are the types of things that can go into a financial plan. Okay. We, we see it all the time with all different clients. A lot of people on the surface, they will just say, well, I just need to have a certain amount of money so I can do whatever I want to do. Well, let's talk about what you want to do. Let's put a line item in there. Let's say that you, you end up needing to spend $4,500 a year on a mentoring program with kids that you want to get involved with. Or let's suppose that you say, you know what, I'd like to be able to take, uh, you know, so many kids to a ball game each year from the local church or the boys, you know, boys and girls club and things like that. How are we going to line item all of that into your financial plan, right? So there's a lot more involved to it other than just saying, let's just try and save as much money as we want, <laughs> right? Because we want to try and get value out of the resources that the Lord's blessed us. It's with. all about goals, isn't it? It's about what you really want. Well, to it's do. about goals and it's about setting things aside and, and recognizing that we do not want money to drive our life decisions. Mm -hmm. We would rather drive our life decisions and extract value mm -hmm. using the dollars that we have. So that's kind of a, a, a thing here you know, on, on, on all of this. And, and again, it goes back to your financial plan. It goes back to all of that stuff. And if people say, Oh, that stuff kind of sounds corny. Well, you know what, let me get on the phone and call a bunch of people who are actually bored in retirement and ask them if they're having fun today. Right. Yeah. Okay. Versus a whole lot of people that are not bored in retirement and ask them if they're having fun. Okay. And a lot of it is not, uh, predicated off of big fat bank accounts either chris okay. sometimes it's grandkids right that's that's what it's really about is those yes things. yeah exactly yeah it could very well be it could very well be so my point is this start thinking about the goals that you want to try to obtain that start thinking about the 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 things that are important to you about the relationships you have and put that into your financial plan so yeah. hey we're going to take another quick break let's keep the phone lines open give us a ring at 855 rose 123 that's 855 767 3123 you're listening to making money sense i'm larry rosenthal and we'll be back in a moment you are listening to making money sense live with larry rosenthal phone lines are open for your retirement and financial planning questions at 855 rose 123 that's 855-767-3123 more making money sense in a moment Hey, 
And here's another Money Minute with Larry Rosenthal. We've all heard the more risk you get, the more opportunity there is for growth in returns in your investments. However, can you have too much risk in your investments so that you get diminishing returns? You can only water ski behind one boat at a time. Make sure your risk-adjusted return is aligned with your investment objectives. Get started with your financial plan today at LarryRosenthal.com or call right now for the Financial Planning Toolkit, 855-767-3123. That's 855-ROSE-123. This is the Larry Rosenthal Show. Well, welcome back to the Larry Rosenthal Show. If you'd like to dial in, we do have some lines available for you for any questions that you have in the remaining minutes of the program. 855-767-3123 is the number to call. That's 855 855- Rose one, two, three, Larry. So some reasons that people work in retirement years, Chris, after they retire is, uh, you know, 31% of people say they want to buy extras. Extras? Now, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't say if it, if it's an extra deserted dinner or if it's a boat. Okay. Um, which it's could be a little bit planning. different on, on the cost end of things, but, but they want to buy extras and, and maybe that's too, too, uh, uh, you know, um, Mr. Corvette, you know what? what yeah, I, I don't know what, what the extras were in, in, in the survey here, but we're looking at it. Um, 19% say to make ends meet, okay? Mm. Um, uh, some people say they want to supplement their investments and still continue to save, and they just keep putting more money in, right? And, and a lot of their wants, the biggest desire, 64% of people surveyed said their biggest desire, their biggest want in retirement, okay, is to stay active and involved. And that's what we were just talking about is what is the game plan? What do you want to do on the other side of your finish line? Right. What is it? What does it really look like? Uh, 48% of the people say, you know what? I want to stay engaged in the industry I was in and, and just, you know, stay sharp. Just I want to come in a consultant or something, do a part-time. A lot of people do that. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so, you know, and 10% of the people said, I want to try a new career. So, you know, that, that's kind of cool, right? You know, I, I don't know if we can go back to pitching and hitting and, and things like that I, at, you at got retirement lot, age. You got that in you. For if, if, if we'd, uh, you know, uh, maybe try ice hockey. I don't know, right? <laughs> Basket weaving. <laughs> Basket weaving. Yeah, I so, but anyway, so, you know, uh, 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 again, you know, I've got a, I've got a handful of more topics here that we want to talk about today. I'm just going to fast. I'm going to roll those into next week and just sort of. Uh, you know, just end the show here in, in the last few minutes with with you know really focusing on your financial plan mm-hmm. and and the importance of it. Not only is there the money aspect of it, but there's the aspect of it of you know what can we do with what we have? How can we accomplish the lifestyle that we want it to enrich the relationships that are that are in our lives? within our financial plan. And it's your financial plan that you're in competition with, not the stock market or not Aunt May's bond fund or whatever, you know, is, is going on there. That's what you're in competition with is your own personal financial plan. So, so think about that hard. Um, you know, one of the most overlooked aspects of a financial plan, believe it or not, Chris, <clears throat> is the monitoring of it. How often do you actually pull it back up and take a look at it and see if you're on pace or not? We see people all the time that that will come to the office and they'll say, well, Larry, yeah, my my old planner, we we built a plan in 2016 and and we haven't looked at it since. Well, no, nothing's changed since 2016. No, nothing at all. Yeah, right. And your goals haven't changed or lifestyle desires or anything like that, you know. And so my my, my point is this is, is, you know, it it needs to be looked at and monitored uh, each year if not, you know, a couple times a year. So it's important to, to, to really boil in on that. So again, go to my website, LarryRosenthal.com, shoot us off an email, ask for a financial planning toolkit. That'll get you started down the road of a financial plan. There's a video there that'll show you the first, you know, it takes about 90 seconds and you'll, it'll, it'll step you through what a plan actually looks like. Stay tuned in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we'll be launching our new website, updated website, as well as you can go to Facebook and follow us on Facebook. We send out articles. Matter of fact, we sent out an article about the content of this show today. So follow us there on Facebook and then sign up for our newsletters. We send out a weekly market commentary, and, um, you know, that'll keep you in line with our webinars and market research and things as far as all that goes. So 
Uh, next week, we'll be talking about, you know, what's happening with the uh, uh, the Fed, with inflation and things like that. So we're going to push all that content into next week right now, rather than trying to bridge into that right here and guess what the numbers are going to look like, right? <laughs> Some people say it's still going to be hot and other people say it may have rolled over just a little bit. So we'll wait and we'll see what happens this coming week. So. In the meantime, if you all have questions during the week, call our office at 855-ROSE-123 or simply visit our website, LarryRosenthal.com, and shoot us off an email right there with any of your financial planning or investment questions, retirement planning, estate planning, whatever's on your mind, give us a ring. So for Bob in the back and Chris McKay, I'm Larry Rosenthal. Have a wonderful week. We'll be back next Saturday with another session of the Larry Rosenthal Show, Making Money Sense. And thank you to those of you that are watching on YouTube, LarryRosenthal.tv as well.